Hi, JR. Uh, thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, so we're just going to go over some basic questions uh, to see how you fit with this position, how you feel about it too, okay? So um, you are interviewing for the KLBJ program here at Austin, Texas. Um, what can you offer our listeners? Well, one thing I can offer is history. I was born and raised in Austin, Texas. I've been listening to KLBJ for as long as I can remember. I remember uh, Dudley and Bob when they were on the air. They were a great pit duo. And so something I can do is I can keep that tradition of keeping Austin weird and keeping Austin rocking, but also move us forward with the times. You know, things are changing. Not as many people listen to classic rock anymore. So I feel as though I can be the best of both worlds in a way, keeping with the traditions, but also changing with the times. Awesome, thank you for that. Um, so um, tell me a little bit about yourself. So as I said, I was born and raised in Austin, Texas. Uh, 1995 so I'm currently attending at BYU-Idaho my major is communications with an emphasis on advertising and I should be graduating Sorry, in over. the spring of 2019 That's great and what do you feel are your strongest communication skills some of my strongest communication skills I believe are my ability to build relationships with other people people not only find me easy to talk to, they find me easy to trust. So I don't know if that has to do with just my general kindness to people or if I just have a trustworthy face, but people generally just find me easy to trust and people easily confide in me and people feel comfortable around me. Awesome. And what do you feel is your greatest strength? My greatest strength? I'd say my greatest strength is my natural sense of humor. I wouldn't say that I'd be like the best stand-up comedian because I can't necessarily think of jokes and develop stories and stuff like that. But in the moment, I'm very humorous. I, I can have people rolling on the floor laughing within minutes of meeting them. That's awesome. Um, now tell me about your greatest weakness, your strongest weakness. I'd say my greatest weakness is my fear of change. I can accept change when I know it's going to happen, but I don't necessarily like change. So I would feel that that's my greatest weakness because as we know this is a changing industry. This industry what is slowly uh, going away and so the only way we can combat that is by changing so if these changes are something that i'm aware of before t the time we implement them or it's something i'm part of then it's easier for me to accept change on those levels but if i have change just sprung onto me i find it very difficult to adapt but i can eventually adapt it just takes time and how do you feel you can or how do you feel you handle pressure pressure i think it depends on what kind of pressure it is so typically in the workplace if it's a task that i know needs to be done and people are relying on me to do it i feel like the pressure focuses my vision and my goals to where i can easily start cutting away the fat the stuff that we don't need to focus on at that time and I can just dig in and focus on the problem at hand. So, at least in the workplace, I feel like pressure is kind of beneficial in a way. I don't necessarily like the feeling of pressure. I don't think anyone does like to feel pressured. But when it comes down to it, pressure can, motivates me. Awesome. So as a, a radio a talk show host, do you often talk live? Um, and sometimes um, mistakes are made. Um, but you're alive, so that's that's a situation that we deal he with here daily. So uh, tell me about a time that you made a mistake and overcame it successfully. A time I overcame a mistake. Well, I remember one time when I was working as a bookkeeper at HEB. Uh, 
at the end of the night, we have to collect all of the tills, and we have to rebuild the tills for the next morning so that everyone can start out with the correct amount of money. And then you have to close yourself out and make sure you have the correct amount of money in the bank. But I remember one evening, I was, uh, I believe it was about $200 short. So that means I'm missing $200 in my own personal bank, and that's what I'm accountable for. And I have to answer to my boss if I'm missing that amount of money and the money isn't found. So at that time, I still had a half hour of work uh, available on the clock. So instead of going home, I simply started going through all of the tills I already set up. I started counting through every single bit of money that I had left in the tills until I found the money. So I'd say that's one time I overcame. That's awesome. That's very good. Um, and this kind of goes along with that question. Tell me how you handle difficult situations. So I'd say with difficult situations, the first thing I like to do is step back and examine exactly what's happening and look for the absolute best uh, solution to the problem. You get those people that are like, oh, like we have to handle the problem this way because this is the way the problem has always been handled. This is the way we've always done it. I don't like that. I don't like the people that do something simply because it's the way it's always been done. I like to take the time to step back and examine the problem and try to find the most efficient way to handle the problem because I feel like even if you just spend five minutes looking into the problem and you don't find a better way than the traditional way, it's only five minutes spent. But if you find a better way to fix the problem and you have that knowledge for the future, you're going to save yourself time in the future. Awesome. That's so great. Um, let's see. Now this is just uh, a question about you. What do you think, um, what do you expect to receive from this position? What I'd like to receive from this position is sort of an outlet. So I have like my friends and family at home that these people I can talk to and uh, these people I can make happy. Making people happy and laugh is one of my favorite things. But that scope is limited as far as, as far as how many people I can actually like get into one room and talk to. But with this position, I'd be able to talk to thousands, of hundreds of thousands of people all across the state of Texas, and even people in other countries with the podcast. So I'd say one thing that I'd be able to get out of this position is being able to do what I love, which is make people happy on just a greater scale. Awesome. And um, just for your last question, it's a fun one. What was the last book you read and why? The last book I read was All Quiet on the Western Front nice. for a humanities class I took in school. And the reason I read it is because we were given a selection of books that we had to read and we had to write a report about it. And I just thought that it'd be good to read this book because it's written on the perspective of a German soldier during World War I. And that's not necessarily a perspective that we get very often in like movies or video games or anything like that. So I'm a person that likes to broaden my horizons and open my mind to how other people feel. So I feel like that's one of the reasons I chose to read the book was because I'd like to understand the point of view of someone we, we would see traditionally as like a bad person. But in the reality, you find out by reading the book that it's just a person. He's doing what he thinks is right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming in, JR. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. I hope to see you soon. We'll get back to you. We'll be in, in touch. Awesome.